You know, I seriously was expecting Jim Parsons to end his closing statements with Bazinga! Welcome back guys, I finally watched the movie Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. And excuse my voice, I am a little sick, so my voice has been going in and out, like I just hit puberty all over again, so it kind of sucks. But anyway, this movie is about Liz Clover, or how they changed it in the movie to Liz Kendall, and Ted Bundy, and about their rocky relationship. And before you get into the movie, you need to understand that this movie is told from Liz's viewpoint, so a lot of things have changed in the film, from real life, and in some ways that kind of helps the film, and in other ways it kind of like hurts the film. And let me remind the viewers again that this is told from Liz's viewpoint because a lot of people are going to go in there and expect Ted Bundy to be kind of like in a cat and mouse film. You know, Zac Efron plays Ted Bundy in this film. And some of the things that he does comes off a little stranger than what I would call his mannerisms as he was portrayed in the real media. The movie itself starts off in prison. You know, Ted is already on death row and Liz kind of goes there to confront him, try to get the truth out of, you know, what's been going on. And it starts off pretty strong, but then the movie starts to move along pretty quick and like I said you know a lot of people might expect this movie to be showing you all these deaths you know that Ted Bundy did you know all the people that he killed and in a way I feel like the film didn't go that route was because to protect the victim's image so let me first talk about Zac Efron as Ted Bundy because he is at the center of the film even though it's told from Liz's viewpoint for the most part I think Zac Efron did fine I don't think he was amazing and I can't say oh my god Zac Efron is Ted Bundy no I don't see it that way and I don't think that's because of Zac Efron's performance. One, Zac Efron is way too muscular to be Ted Bundy. And this kind of reminded me of the O.J. Simpson case because, you know, they look very different. And in this case, same thing. But that was a series, so the story was well told and, you know, they had more time to develop the character. In this one, no, you kind of just get introduced and like, hey, this is Ted and Ted is this way. And in some ways, you know, that kind of doesn't work and obviously they have to show off Zac Efron's abs, which I'm pretty sure Ted Bundy didn't have it in real life. I think Zac Efron does fine with what he he has you know he has that charisma already but the moments that he is showing his true evil side are short-lived because of the way that the movie transitions from scene to scene like it literally rushes through a lot of the killings the kidnappings the sorority girls house and all that stuff because they rather show us all this stuff going on through a news station rather than you know maybe seeing a scene from him doing it or him having a confrontation with Liz but we see everything through the news and we see that a lot throughout this film and to me that kind of hurts the film because that is kind of lazy writing and I'm not sure if that's why the movie kind of seems rushed at points so I don't want to say that Zac Efron was terrible I just think that he didn't have a lot of time to shine as this character and like I said the movie itself changes a lot of things from the actual real story like Liz Clover wrote a book about Ted Bundy and a lot of it's adapted from there but it has changed a lot for example one of the things that they changed is the way that they met Ted Bundy in real life was actually a very lonely person you know like he came off as odd and like very lonely the only reason he got really charismatic was because of the help of the news but in this version Ted approaches her and he's very charismatic but that's not how he went down in real life in real life Liz actually approaches Ted and even mentions that you know Ted looked miserable at this bar so there's a huge difference here and the movie kind of makes me like root for Ted at certain points especially when he's trying to escape those things I feel like I should not be rooting for his character but in some ways it kind of makes me want to root for the character which is not a good thing I would say Lily Collins is Liz I think it was pretty okay uh, a lot of the scenes that she was shown in where she was you know expected to be the single mother and she was dealing with a lot of alcoholism uh, I think it was pretty well done it kind of builds up throughout the entire movie so that was shown pretty well and sometimes I feel like you know even though this is told from Liz's viewpoint I felt like the movie struggled between Ted and Liz you know because most of the time we see just Ted Bundy so I felt like I forgot about Liz some of the time so it's like oh yeah Liz is in this movie and at points I felt like she didn't even need to be in those scenes except for like emo emotional response now who did an amazing job was Judge Edward Coward who was played by John Malkovich I think he was awesome in this movie but then again it's just John Malkovich and I think he did a really good job being the judge unfortunately we only get him throw towards the end of the movie in the courtroom drama portion of this with Jim Parsons and he was awesome I really liked him because you know this judge is the one that said these words to Ted Bundy of being you know extremely wicked shockingly evil and vile during his death sentence that's where the title of the movie comes from now the moments where Zac Efron does 
Cheyenne's Ted Bundy are during the moments of the interviews. And that's due to the fact that a lot of these moments were televised and we got to see, you know, how Ted reacted or interacted with the media. That's the only reason I would say Zac Efron shined in those moments because he has something to compare with. So I think he did a really good job in those moments. But then again, he's showing only the charismatic version of Ted, you know, where he's very flirty. A lot of girls are like falling for him. And we even see like the newscast, you know, showing like, you know, girls talking about him and how they're like, they think he's dreamy or whatever. So I, I, I don't know. Something about that, I felt like the movie itself honed it down and didn't really like show us how evil this guy was because I didn't get that vibe from this Ted Bundy compared to the real version. The courtroom drama is what kind of helps this movie since we've been skipping through a lot of different scenarios and a lot of like infamous moments from Ted's life, like getting pulled over with the cop, punching the cop, you know, getting away, escaping the sorority uh, girl's home, or, like the killings. A lot of that shit is skipped over until we get to the courtroom drama where it gets pretty interesting. We even get uh, introduced to Carolyn, which also, again, I think she did okay. I didn't think it was fantastic or anything like that, but a lot of the stuff is rushed. That's the whole point of this movie. To me, I just felt like it was rushed and it does not help the film. I felt like once it gets to the courtroom drama, it kind of slows down and it gives us more exposure to Ted and Ted, you know, being the person that he was in the courtroom is what made him this infamous serial killer. You know, he was able to manipulate some of the courtroom and eventually finds himself in a death sentence because he's an idiot, obviously. But in the end, guys, do I recommend you watching this movie? I would say in parts, yes, because it kind of does show us, you know, Ted's life with Liz. You know, we, we don't really get to see that like out in documentaries or anything like that. So it kind of like looked into a secret life that Ted had with Liz, which in parts, it was good. I mean, Ted never came off as a dangerous person in the movie to me, except in the parts where they were showing him through a news television. But to me, that's just lazy. And I, I feel like in parts, it was good. In parts, it wasn't so great. And at the end of it, guys, I almost even forgot to make a review about this movie. And that's how forgetful I was about this particular movie. I was really looking forward to this movie. And honestly, I it's a passable film for me, even though it's on Netflix. So you can guys, you guys can catch it anytime you want. So with that said, guys, Zac Efron was okay. Lily Collins was also okay. John Malkovich was the best thing about this. Jim Parsons was just all right. He just reminded me of The Big Bang Theory. But that that's really it. I think they could have done more. Some of the shots themselves just seemed seem jarring because a lot of it was handheld. So it just kind of like, it just felt odd to me. So overall, Ted Bundy and Zac Efron, um, I think it was okay. I think they could have been done. I think it would have been better if they would have let Zac Efron's scenes play out a little bit more rather than just like rush through everything. So with that said, I'm going to give Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile a 2.5 out of 5. And like I said, I made a video about Liz and Ted uh, previous to this movie. So make sure you guys watch that. I'll link it somewhere around here. So until the next one, stay tuned.